What will be the biggest stories of the year ahead? In 2019, the driverless revolution finally hits the road. So this is science fiction that's going to become science fact. New tech pays tribute to the old masters. You'll have an explosion of Leonardo mania in 2019. Flights will be cheaper than ever. And 50 years after the riots that kick-started the modern gay rights movement, the fight goes global. In 2019, power dressing will take on a whole new meaning when this strange-looking clothing hits the market. Not so much high fashion as high tech, it's a suit with built-in power that will literally get people moving. The suit that we're introducing in 2019 is actually an assist suit, so you have to be moving. Think of it kind of like an electric bicycle, you're pedaling and getting extra power. Part of the wearable robotics revolution, the suit is made up of battery-powered muscle packs which contract, just like a human muscle, to boost the wearer's strength. Those robotic muscles that we're providing actually turn on and provide strength to the body in a coordinated way when you need it while you're moving. With the global population of over 60s expected to more than double by 2050, and retirement age increasing, there's no shortage of potential markets. In Japan, the average age of a construction worker is 48, so there's lots of demand for the uh, labor workforce. But don't expect the suits to ease the burden on aching limbs and overstretched health services anytime soon, as these suits don't come cheap. According to the manufacturer, they'll retail for around the cost of a bespoke, tailored suit. The challenge globally is how do we get such technologies to everybody? It doesn't happen in the way that, say, for example, Formula One technology eventually trickles down into the average car. Twenty nineteen will be the year low cost, long haul travel takes off. You'll be able to buy a ten thousand mile flight from London to Sydney for around three hundred and fifty dollars, and this is why. The world will boast two new state-of-the-art mega-hub airports, and competition between them will drive down the cost of flying. Daxing Airport, outside Beijing, is due to open in 2019 and will feed growing demand for air travel in China. Over the next 20 years, the number of Chinese air passengers is set to triple. Beijing already has one of the world's biggest airports, and for China, this new mega-hub will send an important message to the world. The opening of Daxing Airport is a symbol that the centre of the world's economy has shifted east to China. Rivaling Daxing as a national symbol of global prestige will be a new mega-hub airport in Istanbul. Opened in 2018, it covers a staggering 26 square miles, an area larger than the island of Manhattan. And in 2019, consumers will again be the beneficiaries of a state-sponsored economic push. The Turkish government has actually been giving fuel subsidies to its airlines to try and help bring the tourism industry back. But the low fares offered by competition between these hubs could be short-lived. In a few years, many airlines will begin offsetting their carbon, with the costs potentially passed down to passengers. You could describe 2019 perhaps as being the year to fly because who knows what's going to happen to airfares when the airlines actually have to start paying to offset their emissions. We discovered that Americans consider homosexuality more harmful to society than adultery, abortion or prostitution. In 2019, LGBT communities will mark the anniversary of a seminal event. It will be 50 years since patrons at New York Gay Bar, the Stonewall Inn, resisted police attempts to arrest them. The resulting Stonewall riots kick-started the modern gay rights movement. I think anniversaries like the Stonewall riots are important because they remind us just how far we've come but also how much change is still needed because those sorts of repressions and violence is still happening in much of the world. In many countries, 
the laws that continue to allow intolerance and inequality have their roots in religion. The, these laws originate from two main sources, Sharia law and the British colonial exportation of Christian principles. But one former British colony has given hope to the global movement for change. In 2018, India decriminalized homosexuality and gay rights campaigners hope 2019 will be the year other former British colonies follow suit. In February, Kenya's High Court will rule on whether to decriminalize same-sex intimacy, which is currently punishable with up to 14 years in prison. Decriminalization would mean for the first time, LGBT Kenyans would start to participate within uh, the Kenyan democracy as equals. We're going to be just a step closer to figuring out how an equal Kenya looks like. Campaigners hope that decriminalization could start a domino effect across Africa. I think it will be a tipping point for Africa. It will be the beginning of the unraveling of these laws. The Stonewall rioters fought for the right to be free and fundamental human rights will remain at the top of the agenda for sexual and gender freedom in 2019. In 2019, people are actually going to be paying to take robo-taxis uh, in some cities in America at least. So this is sort of science fiction that's going to become science fact. With GM launching its driverless taxi service and Waymo expanding its robo-taxis to new cities, 2019 will be the year the driverless car revolution hits the road. So 2019 is a race to the starting line. I think what gets interesting is when this technology starts to scale up, reach more cities, and ultimately more people have access to this really great technology. Knight Rider. It was hit 1980s TV show Knight Rider that popularized self-driving cars controlled by artificial intelligence. Since then, billions of dollars of investment have fueled the drive to turn the idea into reality. Dubai has committed to a quarter of all trips being driverless by 2030. And the driverless car industry will be worth a predicted $550 billion by 2026. We're talking very, very large numbers, and that number reflects the optimism that this is going to be a very significant technology in the future. But the advance of driverless cars could be held up by a red flag. As in March of 2018, the first person was killed by a self-driving car. At the moment, about 40,000 people are killed on the roads in America alone each year. Uh, so if, imagine if you improve safety by 99%, so you, you then are talking about 400 road deaths a year. I think that would still be quite a hard sell. That's somebody being killed by a robo-taxi every day. But manufacturers are confident that the inevitable progress of technology will win over the skeptics. There's no cap on what a computer could do in terms of safety. They'll just get better and better every year. I think you could pretty quickly see a flip from, I don't want to share the road with these killer machines, to I don't want to share the road with these killer humans anymore. May 2019 will mark 500 years since the death of the greatest polymath in global history. Leonardo da Vinci. I think you'll have an explosion of Leonardo mania in 2019. Leonardo painted the world's most expensive picture, the Salvator Mundi, which was auctioned for $450 million. But he was also a brilliant scientist and engineer. In 2019, his art and notebooks will be taking center stage at blockbuster exhibitions. If I could have an afternoon with Leonardo da Vinci, I'd show him the internet because he would be so thrilled at the way we can now have ways to be curious about anything we want to know. Leonardo sketched out designs for inventions that followed centuries later, such as scuba equipment and the tank. And in 2019, another of his designs will be getting a new lease of life as a flying car 
becomes commercially available. The car flies thanks to folding helicopter blades, which are derived from Leonardo's invention, the aerial screw. Leonardo would have loved the concept of a flying car. So when you look at that aerial screw, that was designed as a prop for a play to bring angels down from the rafters. But then Leonardo blurs the fantasy into reality and spends the rest of his life trying to build a real flying machine. Leonardo was the original outsider. He's illegitimate, he's left-handed, he's a vegetarian, he's gay, he wears short purple tunics. But they love him in Florence, they embrace him. And that's the cool thing about the Renaissance was it embraced people who were sometimes naturally weird. Five centuries after his death, there are still simple lessons he can teach today's divided world. Leonardo was very tolerant. He realized that we should bring people together, not separate into tribes. These are the type of things that we're still trying to learn in 2019, 500 years after he died. <laughs>